In today's episode, we're gonna go over the one most common mistake I see when people are learning how to TIG weld. Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do welding projects on both two-dimensional and three-dimensional surfaces. And on my YouTube channel, I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to rip back, check out the previous episodes. There's a ton there for you to watch. So I get sick of answering the same question over and over. <laughs> I've been over this extensively in previous episodes, but I felt like it needed its own episode and I might end up redoing different variations of this episode in the future because it's that important. And the most common mistake I see when people first start getting going is improper standoff distance. Now, for anybody that does not know, the standoff distance is the distance from the tip of the tungsten to the workpiece. And it plays a big role in getting you the best weld possible. So the ideal rule of thumb is that the distance that your tungsten should be away from the weld pool is approximately the thickness of your tungsten. So if you're using an eighth inch tungsten or 3.2 millimeters, your standoff distance should be somewhere around the ballpark of one eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters away from your workpiece. Again, you can bend the rules slightly either way, but this is a general rule of thumb of where I recommend people starting. This problem I see all the time, whether it's training someone in person or training someone online in my online training program. So it's really important to address it when you first get going. That way you can cut this bad habit out before it gets ingrained in your brain and it's tough to get rid of later. So you can see in this pass here, look how nice and close I am to everything. I'm in nice and tight. Again, give or take a little bit the thickness of the tungsten, but I'm in nice and tight. Look at the shape of my arc cone here. The shape of my arc cone is relatively uniform and everything is nice and close and compact to the weld pool. Now take a look at this pass here. This pass here, you can see as I fluctuate in standoff distance right here, it's too far away. Look at the shape of the arc cone. The arc cone is not uniform. Take a look at the previous arc cone when it's in nice and tight. Now the other one, look at the difference. That's pretty insane, right? It's a slight difference. That's not even that far. And it makes a big difference in the shape of your arc cone. And it makes a massive difference in how your filler rod goes into the weld pool. So continuing on here, look at the other thing that can happen. Anytime you're TIG welding or you're trying to learn how to TIG weld, you're getting this filler rod kind of clumping off, not going in properly. Right there, we see it just totally ball up and not break off cleanly. It just falls and makes a mess. This is directly related to having too much standoff distance. When you have too much standoff distance, your filler rod just kind of droops off the end of the filler rod and will not enter the weld pool cleanly. So get in nice and tight. Again, look at this, nice and tight. Look how clean that filler rod is going into the weld pool. This is a really big tip. Now, another really common mistake that you see a lot of the time is this. People get set up nice and comfortable at the beginning of the weld, nice and tight, good standoff distance on the beginning. But as it goes on, take a look at it. We're getting further and further away. This is basically because of a hand posture that is uncomfortable. Now I've been over this in previous episodes. I talk about restrictive hand posture. Restrictive hand posture is just basically some kind of way you have your hand anchored to the table where it's not allowing you to travel all the way across your weld path. You wanna make sure that your hand is free and ready to move before you get welding. So once you get welding, you can maintain that proper standoff distance the whole way. That's very, very important. So basically the two things to remember are very comfortable hand, you don't want any restrictive hand posture, and you wanna be constantly aware of how far you are away from your weld pool. Once you master this small detail here, things will get a lot more simple for you, I promise. Your weld pool will form easier and cleaner and more consistent. You will get better filler rod break off in the pool with less contamination and arc deflection. So if you got any value from this video here today, here's how you can repay me. I challenge everybody at the end of every episode, go out and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. I don't care what it is, how big, how small, doesn't matter. Just do something to spread some positivity in the world right now. We need it. So again, everybody out there, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're having a good one. We'll talk soon. Take care. Peace.